Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, everyone. I hope your Sunday morning is fantastic thus far. Uh, for some of you, it's really early. For some of you, it may be our later showing. But we're really glad that you're spending some of your Sunday morning with us here talking about things that affect us as people of the greater Joplin area, uh, and especially as people of faith. Um, one of those things that we always talk about is how to make our community better. And uh, this morning, my guest is going to be uh, Melody Colbert Keene, who's a councilwoman here for the city of Joplin. And the city of Joplin had what I considered to be a brilliant idea recently, um, and that was to make youth more involved in getting uh, some input for the city of Joplin. So that, again, this can be a community where our young people uh, get some input into, the, into some of the things that the city of Joplin may dream about doing. Um, we've had people in the past who've been involved, uh, but now they're going to systematically I ask for that input from some of our young people. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and we're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. So don't go away, and we'll be right back with Melody Colbert Keene of the Joplin City Council. It was silly to be so um, uh, dreading it so much because uh, it was really no big deal. There was no pain afterwards. Um, I was really, really hungry, so I got to have whatever I wanted to have for, for lunch. Um, but, you know, the rest of the day I just slept and, and there was no pain and went to work the next day. Every day that I opened up my refrigerator and saw that, refer that referral on my refrigerator, I just dreaded having to go through it. And, and now I just kind of laugh about it because it just, it was no big deal. And knowing it's behind me, I just don't have to worry about it. Well, my husband and I, we do a lot of riding and we kind of cram everything into the weekends, but uh, eventually, um, you know, we, we'd like to, once we retire, we want to be able to go um, uh, on vacations on our bikes and, and, and go, go riding on weekends a lot more, so we have a lot to look forward to. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning at Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning is well known to the community, I think, Melody Colbert Keene, who's one of our councilwomen for the Joplin City Council. So, Melody, if, for those who aren't familiar with it, tell them a little bit about yourself and how long you've been on the City Council, which has been quite some time at this point in time. Yes, yeah, been yeah. quite a while. Uh, Melody Colbert Keene, and I've, on the City Council, I've been the vice mayor, I've been the mayor, and now I'm a regular council person again. Also, own a restaurant here in Joplin, Mee's Place, mm -hmm. and um, just all around community supporter. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Uh, so who came up with this idea on the city council? I thought it was great when I heard about it, which is why I wanted somebody from the council on to talk about it, which is why we invited you. Yeah, um, we're excited about it. It's something that I've experienced going to uh, some of the National League of Cities uh, conferences, which I was the president of, and I would see all these youth there, and I'm like, what are they doing here? What's, what's going on with this? Yeah. And I found out that they are members of their city's youth councils. And I thought, that's a pretty good idea. And so I got some more information on it and found out um, how to go about starting one, and I said, that'll be a good to have in Joplin. And it gives the students and it gives the younger people a chance to have input on the city processes and things that are happening in the city. Well, I think it's going to help so many ways. First, they get some input into what we might be up about yes. as a city. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're also training leaders for the future, which and is an that, amazing thing. Correct. That is the key thing right there, because how can your city grow when you're not involving your future leaders? Right. And this is a great way to get them um, to get their feet wet, so to speak, to see if that's something they want to do later on. Um, going into that area of their career or that area of their life because sometimes you get involved in something and you don't have pretty much a clue on what is involved. So this will give them um, some insight into the process. This, it gives them some insight into decision making and things like that. Yeah. So we're excited. So how are you going to gather this group? So I know this is <laughs> it is still at its infancy stages. Yes. Sure. I mean, we're just getting rolling. Yes. But how are you going to gather this group? We have a letter and we're sitting out and we've actually had a starting group with the principals of, lo of the area schools here, including the private schools. Mm -hmm. And we're actually trying to involve home educators also to give mm -hmm. everyone a chance to be a part of it. And we're going to have a selection committee and the students will apply for it. They have to have a certain grade point average and recommendations from teachers. But an important thing to know is we're trying not to just pick those 
top upper right. echelon of students because we found out and I found out in different um, experiences that just because they're not as vocal or they're not as um, at that top tier, that doesn't mean they don't have good ideas. Right. And so we want to make sure everyone feels open enough to apply for it and to see that they can contribute to it also. Yeah. So, so in other words, the translation for that is, you know, you might be also incorporating uh, some C and B averages absolutely. as opposed to just the A's. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Good, good, good. So again, I want to encourage uh, if you, you know, if you've got a student out there that, you know, that really has shown some aptitude Absolutely. for something like this to start looking for some of those things or maybe even to yeah. tell them to approach their, their principals or their whatever and say, hey, I'm interested in doing this. Correct. Yeah. And the, a lot of the, the principals and the superintendents, um, some of the, they all will have a letter and they, the students will be presented with this information and then they'll be able to decide if that's what they want to do and pursue that or not. But it's not, we're not um, just going in and say, hey, here's something for, you know, another, another something for you to do while you're trying to get your school studies also. But this is a chance for you to help grow your city and to help shape the future of it because yeah. your input is vital since you will be the leaders of it. We're not going to be there forever. Well, no, no, Although some of us like to think it. Well, I don't. I know <laughs> I'm not going to be there forever. Um, although some people think I'm too mean to die, but that's a different story. But at any rate, um, you know, I do think that it is, uh, you know, kind of really important, you know, that our young people be heard. Absolutely. Uh, we, you know, we've, we've got that same issue in our churches. Mm -hmm. We've got that issue in our community. You know, we want our young people to do that. Now, I don't think a lot of our young people watch. We're not, that's not our demographic for right. this early in the morning. Most of them, there's, you know, their rhythms are that they would not usually by choice be up at 6.30 or I 9 o'clock on a that. Sunday morning. <laughs> but um, if families out there, grandmas, grandpas, uh, moms, dads, yeah. um, you know, get the opportunity or think that this is something that your student might be uh, interested in, or if they've ever complained about what's happened in the city. You <laughs> yes. know, it's just like, well, this city isn't paying any attention to us. They don't care about us. Right. You know, all right, well then tell us what that's we need exactly. to pay attention to. And that's one of the things we're trying to uh, alleviate is because you do often hear that from students and from your younger uh, population, that there's nothing to do or there's nothing for them to be involved in. So this is an opportunity for them to become involved and to contribute their ideas and their suggestions on what they would like to see in the city. Yeah. We want, at, as a council, we won't dictate to them um, issues and situations that we want them to work on. We're gonna actually have them come up with some things because if we just give them uh, the issues or give them situations, that's not really helping. I mean, yes, it's getting another viewpoint, but it's not stimulating their creative their creative juices, so to speak, and say, hey, what, can, what do you see in the city? What do you see that would be a benefit to the city and to the future of it and the growth? So yeah. we're trying to just open it up for them to expressly give their ideas and opinions. Yeah, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, give them a free, uh, give them a free reign in terms of <laughs> just dream about whatever you want to dream about. Yeah, yeah, which is great. Um, I don't know yeah, about free reign, but you know, well, you know. <laughs> there are processes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but you know, what I love about that process is is the fact that they may come up with something that we've never thought of before. Absolutely, and, and that's we, what we're And hoping. it may just and it may just sail. Because uh, you never know. You never know what, what could be the, you know, the, the result of that. Absolutely. Whenever you'd open up the dreaming process, you never know exactly what's going to happen. And that's which the I beauty. Find, which I find interesting. That is the beauty. Yeah. Um, so uh, in terms of that, so we've got this uh, set up in mm -hmm. some ways where we're going to go through the schools and those kinds of things. I want to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to jump on the bandwagon mm -hmm. there. Uh, so we will get their reactions to some of the things we're currently doing, but we'll also give them the opportunity to dream about something bigger. And that's what we're aiming for. Yeah. So when you've seen these young people at, uh, you know, at these conferences mm -hmm. and things like that, um, what, do you, what do you see as the, as the benefit, you know, from some of the folks who've, uh, you know, that you've encountered at mm -hmm. some of those, at those at gatherings? I would probably say one of the main things that I noticed, um, especially when I was president of National League of Cities, one of the main things I noticed, because I would have to go and speak at a lot of the different uh, breakout meetings was the engagement of the youth. You can ask any teacher, any professor, any person around here like that's, that's teaching students per se, and getting that engagement, getting that connection, getting them to open up. When they were in this 
um, this arena, oh, it, my mind was just like, wow, because they were forthcoming with ideas. They had situations and things that I wouldn't, well, maybe in my younger days, but <laughs> wouldn't have thought of, and they were expressing that. And, you know, one of the questions that pops in my mind, they had, well, how would you approach your council member to get an issue addressed or passed that you're passionate about? And every, and we're talking about 100, maybe 200 students in there, and every hand flew up. You know, they, I, I have an idea. This is what we should do, and this is how we should approach it. Wow. And it was really interesting, and that right there was one of the things that, made me think, we really need to get that. And really, all the cities need to have it, but I'm so glad that Joplin is um, making it happen. Embracing the yes, idea. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, which is great, yeah. uh, because uh, again, I, I just think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's short-sighted of us to think that we have all the wisdom. Yes. You know, whoever we are. Yes, just yes to that whole statement. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, I stop and I look at that. There are some, also some members of our community that are sometimes a little bit more invisible because they're in the schools, right. but we don't see them any other place. Right. Like, for example, I'm also, you know, most of my, our viewers know that I'm pastor, not just here at jo in Joplin, mm -hmm. but also in Web City and in Carthage. Mm -hmm. And usually half of my youth in both of those parishes are Hispanic. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I find it very interesting when I finally get the opportunity to listen to my Hispanic students that their concerns and their uh, needs are mirror a lot of the larger community, but there's also some different things uh, because their families uh, have different, uh, you know, work schedules and things like that, that, uh, that, they, that they just have a different way of looking at reality. Absolutely. And until we start listening to some of them mm -hmm. and what some of their, um, you know, what some of their solutions are, we're not gonna have all of what we need in order right. to make the difference. You're absolutely right. We're all, we're all of um, the one species. We're all of the human race, but we all have a different experiences right. that we've grown up with or that has helped shape us. And if we don't listen to different viewpoints other than our own, then we're not going to grow. We're going to stay stagnant. We're going to uh, miss, miss the point on a whole lot of um, different situations. And yeah. I just think it's important that everybody everybody's uh, viewpoints are heard. Yeah, and I just think it's a, it's a, beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, I, and I'm sure that that's probably part of what uh, you'll be looking for as you do this, a little diversity. Absolutely. At least that it reflects the diversity of the area, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, and I, you know, I think that those are all things to the good. How big do you want this council to be? I mean, how, I, I've it, not heard any plan. I don't have any concrete plans, so. You need to come to the council meeting. I guess, <laughs> yeah, that's just what I need to do to add yes, that to my list. Yes, yes. Um, uh -huh. It's going to be <laughs> nine people just like we are um, on the council. So it's yeah. going to be reflective of the council. They'll have their own president. They'll have a vice president, a secretary, that kind of thing. But um, so we wanted to shape it as close to the council as we could, but mm. not exactly say, okay, you have to do things this way and you have to do things that this way. But yeah, so they might not necessarily, so you've not like, you know, done it geographically where each one of you're going to get one from each of the council areas or? Well, we're from the different schools, um, we're looking for a good representation from all of the schools. Okay. And we realize that Joplin being the, the largest um, uh, where the selections want to come from, but we, we have uh, Thomas Jefferson involved, we have Macaulay, we right. have all of those different schools. And it will be the high schools. I want to stress that, that it'll be um, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. And so we want to make sure that um, they're represented, that their voices are heard, and that everybody has a chance to at least, that wants to have a chance to apply. Well, we're talking with Melody Colbert Keene, uh, who's councilwoman here for the city of Joplin. And uh, we have been talking about the, the new uh, Joplin Youth Council uh, for the city council. So uh, we're gonna be right back after a quick break. Don't go away. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV. Brought to you as a community service of Mercy Hospital, Joplin. Well, again, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my guest this morning, Melody Colbert Keen. Uh, so, Melody has been mayor, she's been councilwoman. How many years have you been on the city council? 
This is 13 years this year. So, oh, see, well, I, I, mean, yeah. I, I met you right when I first came and you were just there and I didn't know you were newly elected. So we've been, you've been on the council about as long as I've been in Joplin, which is interesting. That is interesting. So again, we've got uh, this, this plan to put a, a representative youth council yes. to give the Joplin city council and meaning Joplin and the larger Joplin area, a little bit of input from the youth of our area. Yes. Yeah. Um, when, when, when we came up with the idea, I'm just going to make a guess here, but I'm guessing that nobody was really very resistant. No, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> you always have, it's good to have a little bit of um, questioning about. Well, yeah. Because um, I'm sure that the big question is, what are they going to do? Yes. That's and how probably much is what it going nobody, to cost and us. how much is it going to cost? Correct. And I think that those are fair. Absolutely. Those are absolutely fair things to think about. Yes. Because you really wouldn't want to do something that's going to, you know, upset the city, right. you know, apple cart, right. uh, you know, in terms of some of that stuff. Um, and again, uh, you certainly don't want a youth council that's not going to have any voice or any input. I mean, if it's right. just for show. Right. Because if I were one of those young people and I really got on there and thought, well, they're not listening to me anyway, well, what the heck? Exactly. So I, I you know, I would have, you know, I guess I'd have a few theoretical concerns, but but I, I guess I would think, you know, for all of us, I mean, it's like uh, in different places where I've been, we've, you know, we've, uh, you know, sometimes put a youth on the parish council. Sometimes it's just too much pressure for them. But, but mm -hmm. there are moments when we will reflect with the youth uh, as to how things are going with the youth program, mm -hmm. are there things how we'll reflect with the youth? So we find ways of getting some of that input, right. even if it's not uh, as a member of the council. But I think that for them to actually have their own youth council <laughs> kind of gives it a, a little bit of an excitement, a little bit yes. of life. Yes, they're going to have like an ownership of it. So they will have an ownership on what happens in their city and they have a voice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they don't feel that they have a voice. Yeah. So in my thinking, how can we develop youth programs and youth, different things for youth if we don't have their input? Yeah. And how can we offer these things or offer, you know, but it's crucial that and vital that we get their input. Yeah, and it, it wasn't so. a lot of resistance. It wasn't a yeah. lot. It was just, I mean, the normal. It was just, just normal, normal questions. Right. And I, you know, again, and I, you I get that. that. Yeah. Sure, 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 and sure. And you encourage that. Anytime you got something new, you've something got questions new. about how is it going to work. Something, yeah. Yes, yeah. any type of change. Yeah. <laughs> well, and again, I, you know, I'm, I'm just one of those people that just says, you know, the only thing that's not going to change is change. Is change? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, you know, you don't want to lose some of the core values. And I, I just can't imagine Joplin losing the core values of the community. But just yeah. how do we go about reaching some of those core values? Well, and that's a good thing to, to consider also, because I'm also a part of a group that's a grassroots group. It's only like three of us, I believe, that are trying to revitalize a portion of the city that's um, kind of been on the back burner for a while. Mm -hmm. But it's a significant part of the city. Um, and I'm talking about the historic uh, Route 66, right. which is Broadway. And it stretches basically from, well, they opened up Florida now, but um, it, it basically it's your connector from range line to downtown mm -hmm. and we I guess after a while sometimes you get I won't say tired but you just get get it in your mind to say what can we do without waiting for the city or whoever to help and so we, we're, we're getting some things done um, in that area. And it's starting to actually, it's almost like a spark. So it's starting to. Well, I, I, I love that area because I mean, I used to take that route when I was heading between mm -hmm. St. Peter's and the university. Uh -huh. And so that was always my, you know, that was always my route. Yeah. And uh, I've always found some entertaining things on the route, mm -hmm. you know, along the way. So I mean, restaurants that I would never ever stopped at, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, because, you know, right. so I, you know, you, you do those kinds of things uh, because, you know, you just kind of like, well, you know, it's a new spot. Let's mm -hmm. go check it out. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Um, you know, um, you know, and I just, you know, I'm just one, but I'm not, I'm one of those people to just wander in and say, hey, what are you doing in here? Okay? Because that's just my personality. Yeah. Okay? Well, so what, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, I've always heard that this food was good. Yes. So show me something. You know? Uh, you well, know. you definitely need to come to my restaurant. Well, and I've been there a couple times. <laughs> uh, I've been there a couple times. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, it's just one of those uh, situations. I mean, you know, I, you know, I remember too when, you know, when Hackett's was over there uh -huh. and I, you know, drive by and somebody said, well, I'm looking for, you know, a spot. Yeah. And so to do some of that, you know, you decide. So I love that little corridor. 
And a lot of times I walk on the trail, so I mm -hmm. use that little corridor to mm -hmm. go out there. So it's, uh, you know, but I, it is really one of my, my, my uh, preferred routes, you know, back and forth to the university mm -hmm. from downtown. Uh, so, um, you know, and I, I was not aware until I lived here a long time that that was part of mm -hmm. the Route 66. Yes, that is the yeah. original, <clears throat> right. the part that put us in the song. Yeah. Yeah. And there you so, go. and in our thinking, it was why don't we capitalize on that? Yeah. I mean, there's, to me, in my mind, there's not a reason that we shouldn't. And so we've done little things. We've got some banners up that are distinguishing, mm -hmm. you know, right. that um, as it. East Town Dreams District. Yeah. And we're working on putting a pocket park over in that area, just a block from Joe Becker Stadium. Okay. Yeah. And we the book house that book house cinema that opened up. And right. That's an amazing um, establishment. Amazing. Yeah. And um, we're also going to have a street decal right at the intersection of St. Louis, or not St. Uh, High and Broadway, right up from the ball field, from Joe Becker Ball Stadium. Yeah. And it's gonna have Route 66 there and, and Joplin on it. So we're trying to do some things that are revitalizing that area. And hopefully it catches on to where mo other parts of the community um, see that you can do grassroots effort. You don't have to wait for uh, the city to help you or that kind of thing. Which is good. Right. And it I gets mean, the you know. community involved. Well, and it also shows the community that the entrepreneurs in that area, Absolutely. you know, just will help lead it. Yes. If, you know, they don't have to just react, but they can help lead it. Yes. Uh, when when the, the, they see fit, that's, you know. And that's what we're and trying to do. Drum up the business and see whether anybody will show up. Yes. You know. Yeah, which is an it helps thing. that you have good cooking at my restaurant. Did, oh, I, mention, well, did I mention that to you? Uh, you did. Okay, you did. It's shameless, sure. but but you did mention <laughs> well, it. Yeah. And you know, but and I mean, I like I say, I've had a couple of good meals there, which is a good thing. Um, but I do think that that corridor is just kind of a um, it's a fun little pocket of Joplin. Yes. And again, I will say this for any of the areas of Joplin. Again, I want our city to be strong. Absolutely. So you don't want any area of the city. I mean, I would. L I love some of those little houses that you know that, that are back there. Uh, you know, that just kind of like look down over the mm -hmm. valley. Mm -hmm. I I just think that that would be. A, I think it'd be a great place to have a house. You know, <laughs> be one of those little spots that overlooks the little valley there. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think that that's just a. It's just a fun little spot. Well, a lot of people don't know that that's actually the original part of Joplin. Right. And right. so. That's another reason to capitalize on that area. Um, um, you work with what you have, and yeah. that's there, and it's been there, and it's just it's time just to start developing the city. We have yeah. a lot of new areas because of recovery from the tornado, and so we have a lot of new areas that have been developed, and they've been stimulated um, economically. But my thing is, we don't want a patchwork. We want to make a quilt. So how do we connect all these areas together? Mm -hmm. And that's what we hope to, that catches on in all of the areas of Joplin. So it can be this quilt of togetherness, this quilt of community, not just this section of this, this section of this, but the whole Joplin. Yeah, and I think that again, that, that goes back to some of what we were talking about earlier, and that is that you want everybody's input. Yes, it you takes know? everybody's. Exactly. And I think that that is, again, uh, one of the things that every community should be striving for. Yes. You know, not just with our young people with the new youth council, yes. but how do we take uh, all of our varying neighborhoods uh, in those pri in mm -hmm. that pride in those neighborhoods, uh, the, the, the pride of the business owners in some mm -hmm. of those areas, and how do we kind of pump that up? Because again, what's good? What's good for some of those business owners is going to be good for the larger community. Right. And what's good for the larger community should, I hope, feed some of those businesses uh, in some of those areas that, you know, continue to say, um, you know, uh, here's a variation. You know, here's another place. Yes. Um, you know, uh, you know, I not keep... Not just range you know, line. Yeah. Not just Main Street. <laughs> well, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't like, you know, sometimes I don't always like the traffic. I mean, a range line's fine, and it, God knows it's, a, it's one of the lifebloods of the community. Uh, but, you know, there's sometimes I like the off the beaten path, mm -hmm. you know, and I personally, um, I have nothing against chains, but I love the <laughs> color of the local restaurants yeah. to go along with. And if we didn't have both, we'd be missing something Absolutely. in terms of that big mosaic of food. And God knows I love my food, you know? <laughs> um, so I like that mosaic that we have going in the city. I like that ability that we have to have locally owned, um, you know, uh, and also once in a while I get in the mood for something that one of the chains serves. And so that's my destination. I head out there and I, and I find right. it. You well, know, and that's the good thing. And that's the beauty of it is that we have the offering of 
different styles and different uh, different places for people to go. And it, it gives you choices. Choices is a good thing. Yeah, and I think so. I like, again, especially like I say, when it comes to, uh, you know, that mosaic, that quilt we have of food in the area. Yeah. You know, I, uh, you know, you know, you become, like I say, when I became the pastor of Webb City, in addition to the pastor of Carthage, you know, I added to my restaurants. You know, I added to my possibilities and my restaurant mm -hmm. possibilities, which I thought was a good thing. Well, we're, we're here talking a little bit about how we've got this great uh, mosaic, uh, or, or as Melody used the word, quilt of Joplin. Uh, and one of those uh, things and one of those necessary areas is our youth. And so uh, the Joplin City Council has, I think, shown some great wisdom in yes. trying to establish a Joplin Area Youth Council. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to see how that unfolds. And so maybe, you know, uh, next year we might have some of the young people from that council on the show to talk Absolutely. about their experience yes. and to talk a little about those things. But I, I, give, I give the kudos to the City Council for getting some of that going. Um, we uh, are talking uh, with Melody, uh, Melody Colbert Keen uh, this morning about uh, our ability to uh, enlarge and uh, enrich our mosaic or our quilt that is Joplin. <laughs> so uh, we'll be right back after this Mercy Minute uh, for our wrap up. So stick around and don't go away. You don't realize how much weight you put on until it's gone. I'm Katie Dahl. I work in the emergency room at Mercy Joplin. I'm a nurse. I've been there for eight years. I love my job. I think I have the best job in the world because I get to take care of people every single day. I had gastric bypass surgery almost a year ago. I have lost a total of 130 pounds. 30 pounds I lost before surgery with diet and exercise. It's not been easy. The surgery definitely has helped it come off easier, but I still have to, you know, watch what I eat, still have to exercise. I have a lot more energy. I can move around. My body doesn't ache anymore like it used to. I was pre-diabetic and now it's my blood sugars are all good and I'm not worried about being pre-diabetic anymore. I feel like I was when I was younger in high school and in my teenage years just getting back to where I feel comfortable in my own skin now. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning here at Faith in Our Hometown. We're grateful that you spend some of your Sunday morning with us talking about things that matter to us as a Joplin community. Uh, one of the things that we stumbled upon this morning was our great love for the great quilt or mosaic, if you will, that, that, that makes up our greater Joplin area. And I love the little communities that, that, that are really not, maybe not technically part of Joplin, but it's the greater Joplin area. And that's our service area for our show. So it is a, it is a beautiful mosaic. Uh, there are fun things about being from those little communities and there are fun things about adding to the greater picture of who we are. Um, obviously Joplin is the, is the big chunk in the middle of that quilt, uh, but um, I'm always grateful when uh, even our governing bodies realize that there are voices sometimes that aren't being heard. And so kudos to the Joplin City Council for uh, inviting some of our young people through our school system and through our various schools and even our homeschooled uh, individuals in the area to provide a little bit of input uh, to make our city a little bit better, a little bit stronger. So let's uh, say a few prayers for this effort as it gets off the ground, and we'll just uh, wish them all well as they continue uh, this step down that road. Uh, join us again next week for Faith in a Hometown. Let's continue to pray for each other this week. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.